British farming family was evicted today after an eight-year legal battle that went all the way to the Court of Appeal. Derek and Anne Thomas from Colon near Newquay were told to quit because they hadn't paid their rent. They had, but the cheques were never cashed. The following court cases highlighted a grey area in law which ultimately led to today's eviction by the bailiffs. The Thomases thought they had at least another month at Colon Barton Farm, but this morning the bailiffs moved in to clear them out lock, stock and barrel. Their landlord is the official solicitor of the Supreme Court in London, a judicial landlord appointed because the heir to the estate, where they farm, refuses to take over control. The fight began in 1980 when the Thomases were accused of subletting, a claim they've always vehemently denied. We've stood up for our rights because we did not sublet to our neighbour and we did not part from the possession. We've been Where else are you going now? We've been into all this before. Now, we're, we've got a, a, an official execution to do, Jacks. Now, please let us get on with our work. You're not really entitled to be on the premises. The bailiffs okay. moved in not because of subletting, but because the Thomases didn't pay their rent. Because the landlord refused to cash two cheques sent to him by Derek Thomas, the family and workmen, 15 people in all, are being evicted. Derek Thomas has always maintained that by sending the cheques for a year's rent, payment had been made. The law disagreed. Um, the Thomas has done nothing to deserve this. They really haven't. I've tried to help them with their legal fight, so I know the background, and uh, it's just outrageous. The official solicitor has been criticised for his actions. The legal proceedings have cost the estate, of which he's landlord, tens of thousands of pounds. Now the farm will either be sold or run by a manager. The future for the Thomases is uncertain. You've just left the farmhouse now. Is this yes. the last time you'll be...? No, we are coming back on Monday to um, pick up our goods. Where are you going now? We don't know. Anne, how do you feel now? Oh, I feel very sad. I, I think it's just uh, the, the system that, that has, has crushed us because really it wouldn't do for the small man to win, would it? It would, would make other people perhaps not come to heel like they should be. And uh, I feel that the official solicitor and, and people like that, officials of this government and the state, who you, re you hear of this sort of thing happening in communism and communist countries is, is ha really happening in Britain. Can you ever see a time coming when you would walk back over the threshold of the farm? Oh, no, no, never. We no. would like to think there was a possibility, no. but at this moment in time there seems no, no possibility whatsoever. Derek and Anne Thomas say they're considering taking the case to the European court, but that could take years. Meanwhile, they've lost their farm. Rod Holmes and John Wormsley reporting. Well, with us we have Gary Streeter, a Plymouth solicitor who was solicitor to the Thomases in the early days. Um, there is this grey area which I can't understand. I mean, you pay a cheque for rent and it's not cashed and the court says that the landlord was in the right and that the rent hadn't been paid. If I pay something by cheque, I reckon I've paid it. Mm. People should realise, Chris, that when they send a cheque that it constitutes a tender and not a payment. It is a grey area of law, but the Court of Appeal in this case have clearly decided that in these circumstances, when the rent cheques were sent, that was a tender and not a payment, and that is actually of application to every other area. But uh, weren't the Thomases informed? <coughs> Could they not have uh, been told that the landlord wasn't accepting their rent? I'm satisfied that the Thomases never understood that the cheques had not been accepted as rent, and indeed they were produced some two or three years later in, the, in an arbitration hearing having been kept all the time by the official solicitor. I think the very least one could have expected is that the cheques would have been returned. But I think that the lesson for all of us here is that when we send a cheque, we should make jolly sure that the person receiving it has accepted it as payment before we actually rely upon it. So we've actually got to double check from the person concerned that they are accepting it as payment in every transaction? Well, that's right, but of course, usually, it doesn't matter mm. in the sense that you, the person is waiting for the money and happy to receive it. But in this case, it had disastrous consequences. So we, sh we should all make sure the recipient is accepting it as payment. Obviously, one can check the bank statements, but you may, may not get them for a week or two. Yeah, if they had checked their bank statement and found that the money hadn't been taken off, did they have the option, say, of going round to the landlord's front door and poking pound notes through his letterbox saying we've paid? Well, I suppose it would be an unusual sight to behold, but I think, yeah. technically, that has got to be a better way of making payment than, than sending a cheque. But the anomaly here is this, that if you actually write a cheque and give it to someone, and then you change your mind, uh, the recipient can actually sue you on the cheque and you have no defence. So it's the, the receiver takes all and the, the sender loses. Is there nothing more that can be done for the Thomases now? 
So far as the Thomases are concerned, I think it's the end of the legal road. I think they probably have the sympathy of all of us here in the West Country. Um, but there is nowhere else to go, certainly in this country, so far as the law is concerned, and I quite frankly don't hold up much hope if they go off to Strasbourg. Do you know uh, what they are doing now? As far as I know, they, they don't have anywhere to go tonight. I hope that sort of family and friends will rally round, but I really couldn't say. Gary Streeter, thank you very much. Thank you.